Hey everybody, today we are going to start a uh, hopefully two part series on replacing the DLP chip inside this BenQ SX930. It's a fairly new projector. Uh, I believe these were, I think they started making these in 2017. I have to double check on that. But this one is still technically under warranty. Now, I don't do warranty repair work for BenQ, but this came from a local school. And uh, from what I was told, the failure is probably not going to be covered by BenQ. And plus, it'll take too long, and they got to ship it out to California and all that stuff. So they decided just to send it to me, and uh, I was able to get a very reasonable repair estimate for fixing this. So we're going to go that route and just fix it out of warranty. Uh, like I said, it's a fairly new projector. It's a decent projector. Uh, they use this in a classroom. It's got a nice big lens on it, and uh, yeah, it's okay features. It's uh, I think 1280, uh, 1024 by 768 is the native resolution on this, 7,000 lumen, and surprisingly a 2,500 to one contrast ratio, which to me sounds kind of low. I would expect something a little higher, but maybe it has a dynamic iris. I'm not sure. I do see though what looks kind of weird this stuff here i don't know if that's from the cleaners or what but it feels like i don't know it feels like tapered maybe there was tape on it might just be tape goo i don't know we'll clean it up once we uh deal with the dlp chip so the first thing i want to do is get the uh, get this bracket off so that we can start disassembling it and not worry about smashing the bracket through. Now, of course, the bracket has security hex, and I don't have a security hex driver that large here with me. And being that this is the kind with the pin in it, I don't really need that anyway. So let me, uh, let's zoom you guys in. And if you haven't seen this done before, then it's a good thing to know. These are actually one of the most insecure security screws. They have that little nub in the center, and then it's a hex shape on the outside. This one I already cracked loose, but what you do is you get a flathead screwdriver, and you get one that is just big enough to get stuck in the edges and then push against that pin. And there's two ways you can do it. You can actually bend it and break the pin off and then just use a normal hex driver to get it out or you just jam it in there like that and it just takes the screw out if anything it's a little easier than a standard security driver I'll show you on this one this one I have not loosened so you can see it just goes down in there and then I just give it a little little twist and then there we go and this works on the Torx type as well as just the normal, you know, Allen key hex type. Okay, this one the nub broke out of. You can see, you can see how uh, small those are. So I'll just use a normal hex on that one. And then this one with the bent arm. Let's see if this one will, that one's going to break too. That's fine. You can just take a normal, uh, What's this? Four millimeter. H4, hex four. <clears throat> Man, that's like cross threaded or something. I have to go back to that one. There we go. That one's out. So now it's loose. Wow, that's like, it's jammed jammed on the metal there we go what like a dozen washers under it I'm trying to oh i see they must have lost this piece because this has been adapted we'll say but more importantly this is now released let me set that in the back out of the way Yeah, that's 
put these screws and washers in this bag and keep it with the mount. So I know those are mount screws. Start taking out the back screws. We have one, two, three, four, five, six on the bottom. I don't see any on the back. Yep, need to charge battery. So those are out. Let's take the lamp out next. It's the screw. Don't know if that's captive or not. Long screw. slides that way. There's the underside. Not much dust buildup. That's good. Shouldn't see much dust. I did hear something rattling, but I'm thinking that may have been the handle. Peel that off. That's our sticky pad to keep the air where it needs to be. Looks like this may not be under warranty anyway. The uh, lamp has a date on it of 11-22-2015, so that makes me think this might be four years old. Oh, and that one too, probably. Should do it. Oh, come on. That's loose. It's these little pins on the front. Come on, a little more. Oh, one side. Good. Now the other side. Oh, what a pain. That is annoying. And, um, there we are. That's a heck of a lamp. Jeez. Is that a moving vent? Looks like it. So that when the projector's that way, the air goes in there. And when it's that way, it uh, goes in there, I guess something. A big old Ushio bulb. Let's see, that's an NSHA 465QS. QS, huh? There's the connector. There's that screw that I took out. That's a big bulb. Huh, look at the lens. It's foggy. I don't know. I don't know what that's supposed to be. If that's supposed to be that way or not. Let's uh let's pop this. Now it's got the UVIR coating. It's probably just to help diffuse the light. Bulb looks like it's in good shape, too. If you look down inside there, here it's a good view. That's the actual light maker down there. I don't see any white deposits, so that's a good sign. And then there's the uh, date stamp. So let's set this beast out of the way. I do want to find out about this. That's curious. So then we look down here. And I do see some heat damage. Let's see, that lines up with that area of the lamp. 
a lot of heat. See right here. Yeah, I don't think BenQ would have done this under warranty anyway. There we go. So I'll get that cleaned out. But let's take out this screw. And I think we should be able to lift the top off. I don't know if I have to take... Well, let's take the lens ring, the focus and zoom ring off too. And they should just pull. This should be like a W7000 or W6000. Yeah. So you just kind of twist and pull on those. You can see the little uh, things that kind of pop out. This one, same thing. I can't really see. We'll see once we get the top off. are for maybe for a filter for a filter option This has a screw in it, but I don't know if this is screwed to the lens or if it's just sitting on top of an arm, but we'll unscrew it anyway. Yeah, it looks like it was. One more corner. I'm just taking my time because I've never had this top off before. And there's the inside, and there's our keyboard connector right here. We're gonna flip that like that. Pop that guy out. And we'll set the lid back over there. Now this is weird. I didn't do that. Somebody, I mean, I'm guessing that's factory, but that's weird. Yeah, like somebody got in there with cutters. See? And we're cutting this back. Let's see, it was here. 
So that puts it over top of the fans. So this top is probably from a different model or also used in a different model. And they modify it to use in here, cutting it so that it sits, it clears the fans and clears the DLP heat sink. So now we're inside and it's, uh, it's not too bad. I do have to take the focus or the zoom ring off. So let's unscrew those because we will have to take the entire optic block out. No, I can't get to the other one. It's on the bottom. All right. Well, that's fine. We'll figure it out. This is our goal, getting, getting inside here. That's our DLP fan. That's our power fan, exhaust fan, lamp fan, lamp exhaust fan. And then color wheel wire, color wheel sense wire, let's see, fan wire, fan wire, keyboard wire, fan wire, ballast control, blower fan, speaker, fan, fan, and then IR. I see some dust, actually more than I thought I'd see. Well, let's keep going. things very snapped together. So I want the back to come out next, but I'm trying to see if it's screwed in and it looks like one, two, two, four, six, eight, nine. projector for integrators to use. I guess it has a uh, nice setup and it has a LAN which makes it handy for uh, you know control, distributed control. And then let's get a five mil nut driver or millimeter nut driver. And pop these guys out. That's a good start. <clears throat> now we can see in here, we can see how these are held in. So we can take this stuff off if we want. I think we can leave it though for now. We'll start taking the main board out. Let's see that one or you know what let's go for this one I'm hoping this whole thing will come out we'll unplug that fan and that speaker and this fan and that fan
unplug the sensor. Just mark the direction. I think this one is made by Cortronic because of the uh, part number right here. Anytime I see a part number that's two characters, a dot, five characters, another dot, and then some zeros, usually it ends up being a Cortronic device. I don't know for sure, but we'll look around. We may see it on a board somewhere. That one has to come out too. There we are. Okay, and then we have these wires. These are grounds and temperature sensors, maybe. Back here, we're going to leave those. Just going to fold it back. <clears throat> Here's the main power supply. It's fairly well laid out. It almost looks like a prototype, kind of. Just, it's so, you know, open. After working on that other uh, HD141 two weeks ago, it's... Uh, crazy seeing something so bare, you know, not seeing everything crammed together. So anyway, this is what we're going for. So we need to take this optic module out. There are, looks like one, two, maybe four screws. And then we might have to take the front off too. I'm not quite sure how we're going to deal with the uh, lens because it has a screw on the bottom. Yeah, one there. Looks like one there. Let's take out these two first. What I might do is just take the front off with it. the last one so there's three and this should be something still oh let's see if uh all right so it's down down there Another one. good. So that is loose.
let's get this lens off. Oh, <laughs> you see that? I just didn't want to force it because I didn't know, but I will. There we go. It does, it pops right off. There's the one screw on top and then two twisty locks. That makes way more sense. put this back on. I was going to say, it didn't really make sense that it would come off that way, but I haven't opened up one of these before. There we go. And then we'll set the main board. We'll just kind of back in place. Here we go. Here's the optic module. There's the heat sink for the DLP chip. It's got uh, weird stuff in dust, but I don't know. Then you can see where it goes on the back. There's the heat pipes, a lot like a computer. There's the color wheel and then the light tunnel. The adjustment on the light tunnel is different. It looks like, yeah, it's adjusted here. And then also on top, but they're glued down. We're not worried about those. We want to get this heat sink assembly off. So I'll stick it on this foam. And let's get these screws out. I need to confirm the part number before I uh, hit submit on my order. It's a good thing I checked because the part number I was looking at online is different than this one. So we keep all those screws together. So this ran hot. Here we'll get our plastic. Yeah, you see how that stuff just kind of comes up in chunks. It's not very paste-like. Yeah, it feels crunchy. It just it got very hot. So let's look at this chip. I might even have one of these. Oh, let me cover up that optic area. We don't want dust getting in here. So I'm just going to carefully just kind of tuck that in. Let's slide that out of the way. And then we'll look at this. The, uh, there's the chip. Part number 1076 Let's look at the surface. Yeah, I think that's pretty cooked. I don't think it's supposed to have that kind of, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, rainbow. Should be flat. The other possibility is that it had a bad connection. Just want to clean that face off real. Oh, we got a rubber gasket. want to make sure that's really clean so that we can determine if this chip is definitely bad. 
And the pictures and video I saw definitely show a uh, what looks like a bad DLP chip. The whole bottom, whole bottom corner here. I'll put some uh, shots up now. And this, and that. By the magic of TV, it is now about four days later, and we have a DLP chip sent from Poland. It should be an OEM, a new OEM. Many times a used OEM is fine, but because of the customer, this is for, I want it to be a new OEM. So let's see here, acershop.pl, so yep, that's from Poland, nothing else, nope, nothing else. Okay, so let's look in here, now it turns out the chip is the same for a couple Acer models, so that's how I ordered it, I did get this via eBay. Projector parts are difficult to buy, uh, almost impossible to buy through the companies. Panasonic and a few others you can get through like Encompass parts and that pack parts, but I like eBay. Oh yeah, oh this looks like it's going to be an OEM for sure. Let's cut this seal. It looks like they inspected it, which I appreciate. And all that to hold this, which you know that's fine. This was 130 bucks or so. So, oh, that might not be the same. Their part number might be wrong. That's a little frustrating. Okay, so here's the original. 1076 7428. Yeah. Oh, 107.6.7428. Oh, no, it is the right one. Okay, good. Good. There's another one that's similar that doesn't have um, pads in one spot. And a lot of people advertise that one as the compatible, so that's been in my head, so I kind of mixed it up. But that's good. This is exactly what I want, and I'm glad because I don't want to have to send it back to uh, Poland. So, we put the old one out of the way. We'll get the carrier set over here. And let's. I'm going to get set up so we can install it into the optic block or optic module. We have the optic module, the uh, mounting plate, and then the uh, heat sink is right out of frame here. There we go. That spacer, we're going to need that. So, first, I'm going to set that in place. This whole thing is going to hinge up. Get the chip out, being very careful to only hold it on the sides. Let's get the old one. We'll hold them side by side because I actually need to move the uh, foam. There's a foam ring that helps seal out dust and light. Yep, it's got the 29 end mark on it. Yeah, if you look at the old one, there's like a rainbow effect. I think that's because the back may have delaminated. Uh, because rather than have little white dots, this just has a blank corner to it. It's really weird. But piece of dust on it. If I flip it, like turn it, you can see that kind of right there, that rainbow. And this one doesn't do that at all. It's just a mirror the way it should be. So let's set this in place. 
All right, there's the index mark right there. Just like that, pushes down. That locks in. So then, we're gonna line up those two holes, put that in place, and then I'm gonna just set it on its face. We'll get that heat sink ready. I'm gonna keep my finger on there so that doesn't drop. It has the heat sink pad already on it. There we are. Right in place. Now I'm gonna put two screws in. just to hold it and then we'll put the other two in I tighten these down like you kind of would a you know a car tire or anything with multiple fasteners just kind of get them snug and then evenly tighten them I'm going to tighten these in an X so we'll get that one down but not tight oops And then we'll bring this one down till it's snug a little more a little more there we go that's ready to go back in the projector so let's uh, reinstall this and then see what happens so to put this back in going to fold the motherboard out. Oh, the screw that I dropped earlier. There we go. Just want to move that infrared wire out of the way because this is going to tip in and down. There we go. There's little pins right there. That has to drop in. Let's check the other side. I don't think I don't know if that pin dropped in. Seems like it's twisted just slightly. Yep. There we go. that's down straight there's a pin there it is right next to that screw no nope, you still can't see it there it is all right that little black pin right there above the hole that has to line up and then that black pin right there at the edge of the light that has to line up Next, we'll put some screws back in. And as I always say, when you're putting in screws into plastic threads, back them out a little bit until it kind of drops in and catches the first thread. That prevents you from having to cut new threads into the plastic, which once or twice isn't a big deal, but if you do it a few times, you will end up just, just kind of hogging out the hole there we go. Walk 
looking good. So now all the fasteners for the optic module are back in. Next, we want to get ready to connect the main board. So I'm just going to move some of these other wires back. So we have to get that the slide into here. Oh, but I have the main board loose. Let's uh, just set the main board back for a moment. We'll put the superstructure in first to prevent any wires from getting caught. You can keep an eye on it. I took it apart with having the main board still attached to this, but putting it back in, getting that connector lined up, and making sure all the small wires are not impeded is important so for an extra two minutes worth of work it was worth it there we go Next, we will install the main board. Move some of these wires out of the way. Now you can slide this all back together as one piece, but I don't know. Move that down and that down and the rest of that sits in position. So first, I'll reach in front of the camera. I want to put this back on after we reconnect the wires. So first things first, fan, speaker. Blower fan, lower blower fan that fan, ballast control, we got here upper blower fan, well that's going to be a speaker, that can't go on until I put the metal on, so let's just get these fans, so then we have our intake and DLP cooling fan pair, Yeah, and then that's a lower blower fan. We have an IR receiver. That's the speaker I'm going to do last. And then let's get our color wheel. All right. There we are. sensor. All right, good. Because that goes through here. Oop. 
like it. All right, you can put these back in. And these two, oh, I should show you. These two are the short ones. They're short ones and ones that are about double that length. Don't mix them up because the long ones won't work here. Okay, so that, that should be good. We do have this thingy, which normally goes here, but I think we have to wait until we're ready to put the top cover on. Yeah, that won't fit through. This sits on top. In fact, I'm going to leave it in there. We have our back cover, but we're going to make sure it works before we put that on. Spin it back around. Let's get our four, almost five year old lamp. Eh, four year old lamp, sorry. November, so almost four year old lamp. This thing's a chore to get lined up. In fact, I'm going to leave the uh, screw out for the moment. And we will connect. Connect this guy so that we can make sure everything's working before we put the lid on. There we go. Okay, so let's get our little tool. Get the AC on. And let's see what happens. All right, flashing light, that's good. Hey. All right, color wheel's on. Lamp is on. And we have picture. Small picture, but picture. Let's see. Uh... That's zoom. Ah. There we go. Oh, that's as good as that's going to get this close. A little better. A little too close though. Oh wow, things run off a lot of light. You can see the color wheel on the camera here. There's the red bar and the blue and the green, so it's not in sync obviously. But this is a good sign because it's all working. Let's uh, check the menu. Yeah. Let's see, wrong button. Let's see if there's a uh, test pattern. Yep. There's our hatch. Oh, 
I guess that's it. I don't want that. So that looks really good. Before there was like a, uh, right here it was just, I'll put up a, again a, a picture here right now. And you can see the way that corner is all messed up. That was uh, the original symptom and this projector is not that old. So I'm really surprised they had that kind of problem this early. I'm considering trying to take that chip apart to see if we can figure out what actually happened. I think the mirror assembly delaminated. Let's see. I'm not worried about fingerprints anymore. You can see that rainbow spot. I think something delaminated inside. So this is good. Let's uh, shut it down. And then we'll finish putting it back together. And uh, we'll try it one more time on the big screen. Okay, I'm gonna try another angle. So we unhook the keyboard. That will be reinstalled into the top shell. Take out my little switch bypass. I'm actually going to remove the lamp as well. I just don't need something this hot sitting around where I might burn myself. Set that over there. First thing, this back has to go on. That was a little tricky coming off, so it's gonna be a little tricky going back on. The uh, you go up and then just kind of rotate it in like that. And that should I should see something like that once it's in. There we go. So now let's put these back in. There we are, we'll get them started. Then we'll get the five millimeter nut driver. Tighten them down. You do want to start them. I find that a Phillips head usually has enough pressure to get the threads to grab. Because the uh, nut driver is not going to give it any downward pressure to make the threads grab. Then we have some machine screws for the HDMI. There's two kinds of screws. There's that kind and that kind, machine thread and then the coarse thread. Machine threads are for the uh, fine thread areas like the uh, HDMI. And then the coarse thread is for the composite input. Now, get the uh, M5. These don't have to be super tight, but they need to be pretty tight. So take them down till they stop and then just go maybe half a turn more. Let's see, that's stopping, so a eh, quarter turn more. All right, so all the way down until it stops, and then, yeah, a quarter turn seems to be good. These will break, so you don't want to over tighten them, but you want them tight enough so when you put a connector in, they don't loosen up and come out with the connector. I'm using this <laughs> to find, to look in my uh, viewfinder of my phone. I'll just hold it above and then I can see the screen. 
There we go. Now you guys can. There you go. Now you can see a lot better. Next, I'm going to put the upper cover back together. Take our button panel. That just drops in. And that goes on top. Then the short coarse thread screws hold this down. And then we'll open the top, the uh, little cover for the lens height adjustment before we put that guy back on. We will also have to put the uh, lens ring back on before we put the cover on. So I need to remember to do that too. All right, so those are good. So this, good. First thing we go back on is going to be this ring. It locks on the bottom with those two. And then there's a screw that goes in there. That's why I was lining that hole up. So let's see, it's gonna go that way to lock. So yeah, just like that. There we go, it clicked. And then there's the screw hole. smaller Phillips head for that. There we go. Let's go with the pH zero. That's good. There we go. We could also put the focus ring on. That just locks on though. So you just turn that. Oh, come on. We'll just turn that until it drops in. that so now it's in and we go the other way and you'll just feel a little click and there we go there's some focus and zoom good shape and then we'll just give it a once over looking inside making sure all the wires are routed happy make sure nothing where it shouldn't be, it doesn't look that way. No FOD, foreign object or debris inside. That wire's back in place, those are tucked in. I believe now we can install the top. Keyboard wire first. There we go. Now there's a lot of, um, I don't know what the right word is. There's a lot of uh, clips, these little clips for the side, this kind of stuff that looks like it has to go in this way. Now let's see. So these clips have to go in before we can put that on. So it looks like these will drop in on that side.
the top is back on. You have that screw tight. Now we need to put the first of the uh, case top case screws in before we get around to the bottom. And remember, that is a... There we go. I need to get my screw tip. So that is a fine thread. These will all be... These will all be the pan head type. These are all for the lamp. This holds the lamp door shut. This holds the lamp in, and that also holds the lamp in. The fact these two different kinds of screws for the lamp is a little weird, but, you know, whatever. So when we put the lamp in, we have to make sure this pin drops into that hole and that these two sit on there. Then we'll put that machine screw in. Then we also need to get the connector to line up there and that little loop to go around that standoff. That must hold the connector in place. I know some of the uh, other BenQs, the W1070 for instance, I think doesn't have a screw back by the connector. Come on. That's good. All right, so we'll put this one in. itself. Huh. Why does that not grow? If I mix it up with another one, I might have. Let me check my screw bin again. back in. Those are in. We need to put the uh, plastic cover back in. These do get a little dusty. That's okay though. fella in. All right, that's on. And then we're going to put the bottom screws back in. Just make sure everything's lined up nicely for y'all. are back in. Then we'll get something to wipe the top off.
See, this stuff's weird. This, like... It's just weird. I don't know if that's oil or what, but that's just... I think I might grab some rubbing alcohol and see if that'll clean that stuff off. All right, I'll be right back. Well, I thought I hit record, but I didn't. Apparently, whatever that stuff is, it comes right off with uh, some rubbing alcohol. So I'm not really sure what that material was. That definitely, let's see, I put some on here and you can kind of see the discoloration. So let's just drag it one direction so it looks smoother. I'll also get that focus zoom lens. It's kind of cool watching it dry. So that's clean. And then the lens is not clean. Let's get dirt and then I'll get a lens cleaner cloth or a Kim wipe. And circles. I like it. All right. So let's go set this up and see what it looks like on the big screen. All right, so let's get some power to this fella. Have the uh, Raspberry Pi plugged in for a source. It's on HDMI 1. We got our power standby lights. There we go. And there we go. There's the uh, picture. It's upside down, obviously. And let's just see what a white screen looks like as that comes up, or uh, maybe I should just go into the menu. Yeah, you know what? Let's menu. There we are, test pattern. There it is. Oh, I'm a little high on the screen there. That's okay. You get the idea. It's running well. Let's see how many hours are on the lamp too while I'm at it. There we are, lamp settings. It doesn't say here. Let's check uh, where do we have a information screens the next one. Oops, wrong button. Lamp usage time is 285 hours. I have a hard time believing that, but maybe. If so, that means that DLP chip went bad in under 300 hours. Which, as far as a DLP chip goes, that's kind of uh, it's kind of fast. But that also could make sense, because if electronics are going to go bad, when they're new, it's going to happen quickly. So let's get out of the test pattern. And there's our BenQ screen. We should go back to our HDMI. There we go. I don't have the Raspberry Pi connected to the internet at the moment, but you get the idea. So... So let's shut it down. And now it's good to go. I'm going to reinstall the, uh, the mount and then uh, get it back to the customer. So if you have any questions about your BenQ, whether it's this model or another, put it in the uh, comments there or uh, email me. It's in the about info on my uh, channel page. And as always, thank you for watching.